Good morning and happy Easter to everyone. Welcome to our 8.30 Easter service via Zoom. Only Pastor and I will have audio capability. At the end of the service, I'd like you to hit yes in the participant window if you like this, or hit no if you prefer the pre-recorded sermons that we've done in the past. If we have any major difficulties during our Zoom session, like we get hijacked, I will unfortunately close the whole meeting. At that point, depending on where we are in the service, Pastor and I will record a service and make it available for viewing. And now, let's our begin our service with playing of hymn 365, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
Go ahead, Pastor. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. The one thing I want to add to your announcements, Mark, if I might. Um, this went out in email, but just to encourage everybody to uh, be part of a Bible study that I'm holding on fear. That starts April 22nd at 6.30. Of course, that will be Zoom, um, and it goes for five weeks. Uh, email me, um, look for email, look for stuff that we are sending out for details on that. Uh, hopefully you all have your bulletin in front of you, and our service this day begins with Thanksgiving for baptism. Now, you're muted. Um, however, um, my husband, David, will, will be doing the congregation parts, so please say those parts with him as a part of this service. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning, your spirit, you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for the, your salvation through water, for the water in the font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the holy houses that we reside in, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter. A reading from Acts chapter 10. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism of John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, with the power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. 
for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded to us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify that he is the one or sorry, all the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading from Romans chapter five. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee there they will see me. The gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, O Christ. So, here we are together in a different kind of way, in a way that I don't think anybody would have thought we would have come together for Easter. Eh? But here we are nonetheless worshiping as God's people on this special, special day. Now, when we think of Easter, my guess is there are certain kinds of symbols, certain kinds of things that, that we kind of think of when, when we do, right? Like, like an empty cross, an empty tomb, discarded grave clothes, all those kinds of things. And pretty typically, we think of very bright lights, don't we? Brilliant kind of lights. Thing is, according to Matthew, it was just dawning. So it wasn't very bright just yet. And if you flip it to John, they came when it was dark. Now, understand 
we're, we're going to give credit where it's due here. It was the Marys. It was the women who came to faith here first. They were the first, all right? It took, I, I'm, I'm off on a tangent here, but it took the disciples a little bit of time to get it. They got there, but it was the women first, all right? We just need to say that, all right? But think about those women for a second. Think about it. it they couldn't have been feeling very bright, could they? I mean, gee, think about what they had just witnessed. What They were going to the tomb to prepare him for a proper burial, which they had not had opportunity to do. Their hopes, their dreams, everything they wanted to happen was gone on that cross. Gone. So they couldn't have been feeling very bright, but just the exact opposite. And you think about Mary Magdalene for a little bit. She understood dark, didn't she? Jesus kind of came across her, and she was in a dark time. This was not okay for her, but Jesus turned her dark into light, into hope. And now she felt the darkness kind of caving in again, at least for the moment. Now, this is a pretty incredible kind of scene that they come up on, something like an earthquake and the stone rolling away and a bright light and an angel sit, sitting on top of the stone. Imagine this. I, can you imagine sitting there seeing that? What would you do? What would your response have been if that was the case? How about you? I would have run. <laughs> you know, this was this was an incredible scene they came up against. The guards froze, right? But the Marys had enough faith that they heard what the angel said. Hey, take a look at the take a look at what was in the grave, right? Go in there, look and see. So they did. Go back and tell. Go tell. This is a theme you're going to hear now for a while, the go and tell about the good news. But go and tell the, the, his disciples, his followers, he's alive. So maybe they're going to go, say, go tell. Maybe they don't fully believe it just yet. But one way or the other, they take off, don't they? They run. And on their way back, they about run into Jesus, don't they? They grab his feet. Text says they worshiped him. It's hard to know exactly what they would have done. I don't know about you, but if I would have run into Jesus, who I saw die and is now alive, I might have just dropped to the ground out of fear. Right? And they grabbed his hand and grabbed his feet. And now the light of Easter is beginning to shine. Now it's breaking through all this ugly darkness. Jesus is alive. And still, Jesus wants them to go and tell, go and share the good news. So we know Easter wasn't born in light. All these wonderful symbols that we have, they don't start in light. That's the end game, all these symbols. Really, in this first Easter morning, it was born in darkness and feeling hopeless in what felt like the shadows of death. Now, man. This is something we can relate to right now, can't we? All we got to do is turn on the news. 
right? And, and we hear all this stuff about COVID-19 and, and, and how this has kind of smeared darkness across the world, not just us, not just Pennsylvania, not just the United States. This, this thing, this darkness, right? And that's not to say this is the only darkness we all experience, right? This is what's going on now, but other things are going on in our lives like they did before. And despite all that, here we are. Here we are celebrating this thing we call Easter, celebrating the fact that the resurrection can not be diminished. Rather, the resurrection has the power, has the ability to melt the shadows of darkness away. That's the power of the resurrection. That's what it is. That's what we grab a hold of this day. That we don't let the world and all that it does and all the stuff we run into, and that includes COVID-19, take away the power of the resurrection. It can. It just simply doesn't have the power. Jesus wants us, invites us, encourages us to grab his feet like the Marys did on that first day and feel the joy, the love, the hope. That's what we're here for. Christ is risen. And we get to have this thing, this light of hope, light of joy, light of love in our lives. Grab that. Don't lose that message of hope this day. It is why we're here, and it is what keeps us moving next to know there is a light at the end of this tunnel, and that light's Jesus, so that we can tell the world our God is bigger than a virus. Our God is bigger than anything else, for that matter. Christ is risen and say it with me alleluia amen We join now in confessing our faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We pause now for prayer. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of resurrection, from the very beginning, you give the church the gift of women as your witnesses, as preachers, teachers, and leaders. Open our ears to their proclamation this day and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and bend our voices in the song, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying assuring them of your loving presence, especially we name Maisie, Diane, Christy, Shirley, Ruth, Doreen, Pastor Dufresne, Pam, and those who we now name silently or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Bless the creative and helpful service of worship leaders this day. Musicians and ushers, greeters, worship assistants, preachers, readers, and all others who provide welcome and hospitality in our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for State Stephen's Lutheran Church and, the, and Pastor Werner Cook. Hear us, O oh God. Hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly God, we pray for all those who have been affected by the COVID-19 virus. Dear God, we pray that you would bless them with the healing power of your spirit. Help us, dear God, not to forget those who suffer from other ailments, that you would help and support and bless them with that same healing spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly God, we pray for those on the front line, those who keep grocery stores open, those who work in hospitals and and emergency wards and, and ambulances, all the first responders, dear God, we pray that you would be with all of them, that you would keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now with bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.